The little thoroughbred's been delivered and we are on to a new project. Let's get started. Well, good morning, welcome back to the shop. My name is Brett and as you can see it, I have been hard at work here. There's usually no time uh, between projects to take a little bit of a break. I just keep moving right along. We did make it down to Kentucky and we had a beautiful trip down there to the Keelan racetrack. That's where we delivered our little thoroughbred rocking horse that we were working on here for the last, oh, you know, four to six weeks, if you remember. If you haven't seen that series, I recommend go back and take a look at what I was able to create for the folks down there in Lexington, Kentucky. And speaking of Keeneland, if you've never made it down there, I believe this is my fourth uh, trip down to, in, uh, to hang out at, at Keeneland at the racetrack and go see the races. If you haven't made it there, I highly recommend go down and see the track. It is absolutely beautiful the grounds there are unbelievable there's like i believe over a thousand acres that's what i was told and this time it was a lot more special because we were able to deliver the little custom thoroughbred for the folks down at the keelan mercantile and i got to see a little bit of behind the scenes and meet shannon amy and tag may they were one some of the sweetest girls down there and they just loved the thoroughbred that i made for them and it looks like we're going to be doing a little bit more work in the future for them as well so but it was a lot of fun to go down and see the uh the horse they went ahead and they put it right in the next day they had it set up on display in the uh in the mercantile or at the gift shop right at the track and then i believe it's going to go on down to lexington kentucky to their flagship store at uh, the keelan mercantile so again it was so much fun to meet everyone down there thank you thank you uh to shannon amy and tang may and hopefully we'll be seeing you all again in the spring well again we're back on to a new project here this is a medium on bow rockers and this one's going to be off to houston and we're going to make this a dapple gray and the difference is on this one we're making the rockers out of poplar we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint those and we're either going to paint them uh, a dark blue or black i have not yet heard back from the client as to the direction we're going to go with the paint but i'm going to say we're going to we're going to be hearing back from them here in the next week or so so we can move forward with that but we're going to go ahead and get the clamps off of this we have a halfway decent day out today we're into November right now. The sun's out. It's a little bit chilly, but it's a good day to be outside. We can go ahead and get this guy roughed in. And tomorrow, we're I think tomorrow in the next couple of days, we're supposed to get some rain. So let's go ahead. We'll get this guy roughed in out there. And then the next couple of days while it's raining, we can either work on our horse or we can work on the bow rockers or maybe do a little bit of both, you know, work on both of those so that's what we're going to be working on here today now before we really get started i do want to point out that when we get into this style of horse these are not my uh, design folks these are from the rocking horse shop these are from plans 109 and uh, the 109 plans i believe are for the glider the medium on a glider stand and if you'd like to do the the medium on bow rockers then there's an additional set of plans and i believe they're the 109a right now they're running a sale on those and i think they're 34 pounds i'm not sure what the conversion is so we're going to say it's under 50 dollars or so somewhere around there to get both sets of plans and then you'll have them if you want to do the glider and also the bow rockers that's that's a really good deal so check out the folks at the rocking horse shop and this is where i get all of my plans link in the description if you're interested there's always a link in the description for the rocking horse shop they care you, you can get the saddles uh, you can get the whole entire kit, which is what I do, which includes the saddle, the bridle, the glass eyes, the mane, the tail, the stirrups, the whole thing to finish off your horse. Or you can just have them make you a saddle or make you a bridle, whichever. They're great folks to work with. I've been dealing with them for over 20 years, and I highly recommend if this is something that you've thought about maybe taking on building one of these and you weren't sure where to start, that's where you want to start that's where i started they also have dvds on how to make this these horses and carve them they also have a really fantastic book by anthony dew he is the founder of the rocking horse shop he put out a book i have it 
and I still refer to it, you know, I've been doing these for over 20 years, I still go back and refer to that book. So again, definitely check out all of the information and the resources that the Rocking Horse Shop has. And if you have questions, reach out to them. They'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And of course, if I can answer anything too, you're welcome to contact me uh, either through my email at greenfieldwood at gmail.com or you can just put a comment down below and I do my best to get back to all of the comments and reply to all of the comments. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna get things set up outside and I'll get suited up here. It's a little bit chilly, so I'm gonna put my sweatshirt on and uh, we'll get the camera set up and we'll see if we can get this guy roughed in here this afternoon. So while I get some things set up outside, I also wanna show you, I have another one that is all put together and ready to go. This one is an order that I got from the festival Shaker Woods in August, and that one's gonna be going to Pittsburgh. So y'all thought I was just doing one horse. No, I've been busy and we've got a second one all glued up as well. The other thing I wanna show you too real quick, and we're gonna give this a shot, is I rigged up another tripod here, and in my never ending quest to try to get you the best video possible, I came across this tripod, and I've kind of added a couple here to, to make a little bit of a, an extension. And my hope is, is that we can get this over top of the horse and you know, when I'm working, and you can get a better angle and better view of what I'm doing. So those are just a couple of things that I've been working on here. So we'll go ahead, get things set up out here, and we'll see if we can get this little horse roughed in.
There we go. We've been at it for a couple of hours and we were able to go ahead and get our little or our medium rocking horse pretty well roughed in. And this one has a really good start to it. I can tell just by the neck area in here and shaping this back, bringing these front haunches out. I've got plenty of area here, material to work this neck area out and bring it back in. So this is going to look yeah, this one's going to look really, really good. Of course, again, this is just roughed in, and this is only a matter of a couple of hours, but we can already start to see that horse shape up. Just step, stepping back and looking at it, I've got to take some more material down in the rump. Of course, up underneath here, we'll get that all worked out tomorrow. But yeah, really good start. Well, as you can see, I need to get cleaned up here. So I'm going to get myself dusted off and get cleaned up and finish up here for the night. So tomorrow we'll come back in here. Hopefully they're calling for rain. It's like a 30% chance of rain. Maybe it'll rain overnight and we can get back outside again tomorrow and finish getting this horse pretty well roughed in and we can probably start sanding on it. Um, if not, then I don't know. We'll maybe set up in front of the door and do a little carving. We've got our bow rockers here to go ahead and get those taken apart, you know, and we can work on those. So there's lots to do. So tomorrow's another day. We'll see you tomorrow. It's a new day. We got a lot done yesterday. We've got a lot more to do here today. So I'm just going to jump right in and, uh, you know, we'll just get after it and see what we can get done today.
Houston, we have a problem. Well, son of a gun, I just get started, and as you can see... I've ruined yet another grinder. This is a fairly new grinder too. This is a Porter Cable. This is exactly why I don't buy name brand tools, especially when you're doing carving and this kind of thing. Uh, they just doesn't hold up. And there's no sp sense spending the money on that. I bet you I spent, I probably got 60 or $70 in this and I don't have very many hours on it and it's already, you know, trashed. So luckily I've got another grinder in the back. It's a Harbor Freight still in the box. So I'm going to go ahead and get this changed out and then we'll get back out here and we'll get after it. Well, that didn't quite work out the way I was hoping. I went over to my big cabinet. I knew I had an extra grinder in there and pulled this out. This is an older Craftsman, it still works. Unfortunately, it's got a 3 8 arbor on there and I need a 5 8 So I took about an hour, ran into my local um, Harbor Freight and picked this guy up. It's a Bauer, it's a seven amp, four and a half inch grinder. It was 19 dollars and it's because I'm a, an inside track member, I pay a little bit more. So it was 19 dollars you can't beat that. I'm gonna have to go back and take a look at this and see what I paid for this. I know I probably paid 50 to 60, 70 dollars for this one, and this is a six amp, so this was a pretty good one. Uh, unfortunately, it just took the gear right out of it. So for 19.99, uh, I'll go ahead and switch out my, um, my donut on there, put it on here, we'll be back in business. You know, it may sound like I'm picking on Porter Cable, and I'm not. I think you all know that. I think any tool you have out there now, even a name brand like Porter Cable, DeWalt, Milwaukee, or anything, you're, you know, it, it, they're not made like they were, you know, years ago. So you kind of expect that. But, you know, I was thinking of about it when I was heading into my uh, local Harbor Freight, and I'm thinking, well, I do probably run these grinders. I use them a little bit hard, probably harder than what they're supposed to be used. And I'm thinking, no, I don't think I really am. You know, I'm carving basswood, which is relatively soft or poplar. So it's not really being used that hard. Not quite like in a mill setting where you're grinding metal, you know, and, you know, pulling in all of that kind of dirt. I blow out the back end of my, you know, back here where the uh, brushes are and everything. I always blow those out and kind of keep that clean. So I, you know, I don't think I really am using it that hard. So for something like this and a gear to strip out, I think is, you know, kind of sad, but uh, oh well, I guess that's my little rant. We've got uh, the new extra course blade on here. So I'm going to head back outside and we'll get back after this. All right, let's go ahead and let's give this new grinder a shot here and see how we do.
Well, I've been at this now a total of about four hours, believe it or not, four, four and a half hours, and I'm already sanding the underside of this horse. I'd like to try to get as much done on the underside of this as I can. I like to try to get that out of the way. And I think at this point, I'm gonna take a break and let's put it up on the bench and let's step back and take a look at it and see what it looks like. Cause I wanna see if I get this belly. I like to get that belly to go up in a little bit. So it looks, you know, nice um, when you step back and look at it. So let's carry it in. I like overall what I'm what I'm seeing right here. I've got this kind of coming up underneath here. Like I said, I, I like that look when you could have that underside of that belly kind of coming up into the back legs a little bit. I think it just looks nice. A little bit high right here. We've got a little bit of a crown. No big deal. I can go in here and take that down. I really haven't done too much up here anyways. Um, I really like a lot of this. It seemed on this horse that I was carving in on this belly a little bit more than what I've done on other horses. And I think it's because when I made my center body box, uh, the, the center part of this, I made a little bit wider. And I think that might be why I'm, I'm seeing that and feeling that. But overall, yeah, this looks really good. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit more sanding on this underside and then we can just start rolling it and I'll start working on my sides and we'll finish off on the top. But again, you know, it doesn't take too long to rough these in. Like I said, I've been at this for about four or five hours here and I pretty much got this horse roughed in and I'm ready to start moving on to sanding. I'm gonna take a break right now and walk away from it and I might grab something to eat and then come back in and you know we'll just keep at it good
don't get hurt yourself. Cut you down in size. Well, I've spent another about an hour and a half sanding on this guy. Let's just set him up here and take a look. Let's see how he how he's starting to look. It's looking good. I think this is where I'm going to leave things for tonight. Uh, tomorrow, like I said, it's supposed to rain, and we should be able to go inside now easily. And we'll start working on our legs. We'll pick up on that. We'll get our legs finished. We'll get the front area here, this chest done, and the front legs. Really, there's not much more to go on this little guy. And uh, yeah, and we're going to have this pretty well set. I think next week, this is Thursday, and I think by next week, we should be able to start putting this guy in the paint booth. So yeah, what amazing progress. And for those of you that are on the fence about trying something like this, I absolutely encourage you to give it a shot. I'm telling you, you can do this. And refer back to uh, the Rocking Horse Shop. They have plans for basically the beginners too that uh, are fairly simple to kind of get your feet wet and to kind of understand the process of this and then you can kind of work your way up. But I'm telling you, you can do this. And I absolutely encourage you to give this a shot and you'd be surprised what you can get done. Fantastic. Well, we'll see you tomorrow.
Well, that was about, I'd say, an hour and a half of sanding and working down the legs, the front legs here and the front part of the chest. And if you saw too, I went ahead and I took down a little bit more here behind the neck where the saddle is gonna sit. I just kind of want to slightly just dish that just a little bit so that that saddle and all that padding sits down in there nice and flush. You know, and I shaped a little bit more. I could see where it was a little bit square on the top. And so I just kind of shaped a little bit more there, took that off. You probably noticed me using my you know cheese grater kind of a thing on a drill i've used this before in the past and there's only one area that i really use that on and that's back here behind the neck this just does a really nice job of coming in and really just smoothing this out i like using my orbital sander a lot you'll notice that and i've just kind of over the years gotten used to to using a, a palm sander or an orbital sander but it will leave a little bit of marks and things in here and it won't get it very even in this area and so you can go in with this uh, microplane or i call it a cheese grater on low speed on your drill and just kind of float it and that will smooth out this neck area and then you can go right back in with the sandal flex with 80 grit and just kind of you know work that and smooth that out and that's all there is to that so yeah an hour and a half of work here sanding we have it pretty well sanded there's a few places up underneath here under the neck i can feel but for the most part we can go ahead and start adding our little details in the legs and we'll flip it upside down and add that tenon area you know and just add all of our little details that we like to add yeah so that's pretty much the front and we'll, a few more things to do there and then we can go ahead and move to the back and we'll get the back done Well, I made quite a bit of progress here today. This has been a long day, and I didn't think I'd get this far along, but I was able to not only get our saddle block cut in, I also got the eye set, and if you see, can see, I went ahead and I've got our back legs all sanded, all of the details are in, and as well as the front legs. So I'm telling you, this was a lot of work, but I kind of pushed myself to get it all done and get to this point here today and i'm really happy that i did and um a pretty pretty much sets us up for a pretty good day and good week next week we get in here to the shop we can go ahead and give this a really good final sand and we've got to cut our slot in for the main and we'll go ahead and cut our stirrup staples in and like i said a good hard sand on this and then it's off to the paint booth and we can start getting some primer put on this guy you know a couple of good days here we've been at this i'd say about three days two days of really solid carving on this guy and a solid day of sanding and fine tuning it was a long day but you know we were able to pretty much get this knocked out in about three days or so so that's really really good i think that's again where i'm going to leave things and we'll see you here again monday like i said we'll get in here and give this a really good hard sand and we'll be ready to go ahead and start primering. Well, I really appreciate you all hanging out with me here at the shop and following along on this project. If you have any questions at all, again, drop me a comment down below. Also, I'd love to hear what you've got going on in your shop as well and what you know projects you're working on. Again, if there's something, if this is something that you might be interested in taking on, and again, you don't know where to start or begin, I absolutely recommend jumping on and checking out the uh, Rocking Horse Shops website. They have all kinds of plans for beginners, uh, intermediate, and you know, expert, and they can really guide you and help you get started. They also have books and DVDs and you know to get you going on something like this and again if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer uh, any questions you might have just drop me a comment down below well again i really appreciate you all hanging out with me and uh, please think about uh, hitting that subscribe button especially if you're getting something out of these videos and give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to share you can also check me out on instagram and pinterest uh, i started a little bit of tiktok i was playing around with that and of course i have a facebook page and my website is greenfieldwoodworks.com well until next week happy carving and we'll see you then take care